Hello, my name is Nathan Nobis. I'm an associate professor of philosophy at Morehouse College in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, I also have a position in community health and preventative medicine at Morehouse School of Medicine, uh, where I work on some bioethical issues there. And uh, today I want to give a presentation uh, with the title of the harmful non-therapeutic use of animals in research is morally wrong. I gave my presentation this title because in 2011, after a conference at the Medical University of South Carolina, I uh, presented an article there that was published in a, a medical journal that was called The Harmful Non-Therapeutic Use of Animals in Research is Morally Wrong. Since I have this article, I thought it would be good to present it because it presents a lot of uh, the issues related to ethics and animals. So let's take a look at the abstract to see what we're getting into. So it's argued that using animals in research is morally wrong when the research is non-therapeutic and harmful to the animals. This article discusses methods of moral reasoning and discusses how arguments on this and other bioethical issues might be defended and critiqued. A basic method of moral argument analysis is presented and used to show that common objections to the view that animal research is morally wrong fail. That is, common arguments for the view that animal research is morally permissible are demonstrably unsound or in need of defense. It is argued that the best explanations why harmful non-therapeutic research on human beings is wrong, that is, what it is it about human beings that makes such experimentation wrong, apply to many animals as well. Thus, harmful non-therapeutic animal experimentation is wrong for reasons similar to the reasons that harmful and non-therapeutic human experimentation is wrong. So basically, the, the main argument is this. I begin with something that we can be confident in. Premise one, harmful non-therapeutic experimentation on conscious and sentient human beings, such as imposing fear, pain, distress, injury, confinement, suffering, disease, death, and so on, is wrong. The next step is to say that this fact can be explained or justified so we can identify what it is about human beings that makes such experimentation wrong. We can say why such experimentation is wrong. Third. The best explanations for why these human experiments are wrong supports belief that similarly harmful non-therapeutic experimentation on animals is wrong also. Why is this? Well, because these humans and animals are similar in important ways. They share morally relevant properties. So, therefore, harmful non-therapeutic animal experimentation is wrong. So the basic gist is uh, why think animal experimentation is wrong? Well, think about why human experimentation is wrong or human experimentation that would be in any way comparable to animal experimentation. That's wrong, but we can ask why and we can see where better answers lead. And the argument is that better answers for why this type of experimentation on humans is wrong suggests that um, experimentation on animals is wrong also. So that's the basic argument. So while this presentation is based on an article in a medical journal, it occurred to me that it could be useful to um, sum things up in a more brief way. In 2016, a website called Wallet Hub did a series on animal testing or animal experimentation. I have no idea why Wallet Hub did this, but they did. And so they asked a bunch of people to write very short essays on uh, the ethics of animal experimentation. So um, I wrote one. And I thought it'd be good to uh, take a quick look at it because it basically sums up what I argue in this longer article and what the rest of the presentation will be about. So um, you can find this presentation online yourself as well as lots of other people answering this question. But um, here was my response. They phrased it in terms of animal testing, but our sort of concern here is sort of more broadly animal research, animal experimentation. But uh, what's said here applies to all that. I called this animal testing should be banned, and it's a very short reading. So animal testing involves experimenting on animals to try to determine whether drugs and medical treatments are safe and effective for humans. It's wrong and should be banned. Why? First and most obviously, drugs and medical procedures treat diseases, injuries, and other health problems. So to see if a treatment works, a disease or injury must be created in animals. Understatement. This is often unpleasant. Heart attacks in dogs feel awful. Bone cancers in mice are painful. Pigs being burned to test burn treatments is agonizing. Animals living with the induced conditions is unpleasant also. 
and they are killed at the end of the experiment to study the treatment's effects. It's now easy to see why animal testing is wrong. It violates basic principles of ethical research. It's maleficent or harmful to the research subjects. It's not beneficial to them. It is forced on them since they don't consent. And it is unjust in that animals are burdened with problems not their own. Research, at least with animals who are conscious and so are able to be harmed or made worse off, is wrong for reasons that comparable human research would be wrong. Some argue that the benefits to humans justify animal testing. But when one group benefits at the major expense of another group, that's usually wrong. And how exactly might anyone know that humans benefit more than animals are harmed? And there is scientific evidence that animal testing often is not beneficial for humans and that clinical research, public health research, and technology-based research are more useful. And you could see the uh, Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine and Americans for Medical Advancement for more information. Some claim there are no alternatives to animal testing, that it is necessary. But there are alternatives mentioned above, and it's not literally necessary that anyone do it. But suppose somebody wanted to rob a bank and needed a getaway car. There is no alternative to using the car, so it's necessary for the robbery. Does that make using the car okay? No. Even if something is necessary and there are no alternatives to doing it to achieve a particular end, that doesn't make doing the action right. The end determines that. Finally, some say that this reasoning is all beside the point. If your child was dying and animal testing would save him or her, wouldn't you want that testing done? Many would, and that's an understandable feeling, but it's unlikely that animal experimentation would help their child much. Other methods are more likely to be more fruitful. And more importantly, if my child were dying and I tried to experiment on my neighbor's children to try to save my own child, that would be wrong. Why? Simply because those children would be harmed and treated as mere things to be used and abused for my and my child's benefit, which they are not. Since those reasons apply to many animals experimented on, animal testing is also wrong. So this is a very short uh, reading that basically presents the main arguments from the longer article. Okay, so our topic is obviously in ethics, animals and ethics. And I just wanna mention to think about these topics really well, you are better off having thought about a lot of other topics. So you're better off having uh, taken an ethics course that addresses a wide range of issues in practical ethics or medical ethics or uh, applied ethics. The more you think about one issue, the more you can apply to other issues. So in thinking about, say, abortion and euthanasia and arguments about poverty and the treatment of babies with medical problems and so on and so forth, um, you can learn things that are applicable to thinking about ethics and animals and animal research. It's also good to be familiar with general ethical theories. Uh, there are many of these, and they're, they're all like general explanations about when actions are wrong, permissible, or obligatory. If you're going to argue that animal experimentation is wrong, it can be useful to have understanding of general ideas about when actions are wrong. And if you think it's okay or we must do it, well, having a, an understanding of um, some of the best theories for when actions are permissible, when we're obligated to do something, those are useful also. There are moral argument analysis concepts and skills, and I'm going to mention these uh, later in the lecture. And uh, finally, this is just one issue of one ethical issue about animals. And of course, there are many others. And thinking about many of these other issues can help you understand this. So basically, there's uh, connections among these topics. And the more you know about the other topics, the uh, deeper your understanding of this topic will be. People often approach ethical issues about animals really with not much understanding about anything in ethics in general or anything about other moral issues concerning ethics in animals, and um, that's not really an ideal recipe for success. So part of my strategy here is to use less controversial issues to better understand more controversial issues. Animal experimentation, of course, is uh, very controversial. And uh, a thought here is that we can use some less controversial issues, understand those, and then apply that reasoning back to the more controversial issues. This is kind of related to the idea mentioned earlier, which is that to think about whether animal experimentation is wrong, you can think about why human experimentation is wrong and see where those answers lead. So let me just mention a couple human cases or four human cases to get us thinking about things. They're cases where uh, you would uh, come to understand them and then come to think that what's done was wrong or not wrong. And then we would ask you why. What are your reasons? 
So uh, first, there's the Tuskegee syphilis study, which um, I'm sure you're familiar with. And the basic explanation of that is the four African-American men in Alabama with syphilis were uh, falsely diagnosed. They weren't told they had syphilis. They were given uh, false treatments, things that didn't really work. And when effective treatments were discovered, they weren't given those on the grounds that they wanted to see what happens when syphilis takes its course. So this is a uh, infamous bioethical failure. Another case, there's the case of the Willowbrook children. And these were, Willowbrook was an institution for severely mentally challenged children. And a, a doctor did a study where they gave them hepatitis without consent. Uh, of course, not with their consent and without the parents' consent. So this is another famous case where people learn about it and uh, have judgments about what was done was wrong or not wrong. And of course, they have reasons. Two different cases. Suppose there's a human cadaver study and there's a cardiologist and she gets permission to study her patient's hearts um, after they pass away. Uh, they agree. But the researcher does that research after they die. Finally, some skin tissue research. So here, just a scientist is studying some skin cells from some consenting human donors. So we have four cases. I suspect the first two you would think are quite different from the last two. And why that is, is good to think about. So we will use those reflections later. So the main strategy, again, is this. Would it be wrong to experiment on you or any other conscious, sentient human beings in ways that animals are experimented on? Whatever you think about that, and it's probably going to be, yes, that would be wrong. The question is why? What are your reasons why? What are your answers to this question of would it be wrong? And then our strategy is to ask, like, well, what, what would better answers here imply for any animals? And then what we're going to do is think about, well, what would um, better answers apply for animal research? And my suggestion is that better answers uh, for the human cases have similar implications for many animals. So the structure of my presentation is uh, a little bit unique. First, I want to explain some of my methods. And these are just sort of basic moral argument analysis skills. People tend to approach these issues without any training in how to think about moral arguments. I want to give a very brief little crash course on how to do that. Next, I want to mention some issues that I'm not going to discuss. Um, why is that? Well, I have found in my uh, experience of talking to with people about these issues for quite a while is that when the issue comes up of the ethics of animal experimentation, people tend to raise a lot of issues that are not really relevant to the exact question whether animal research is wrong or not wrong and why. So I just want to mention that because this is how people often respond. Next, I'm going to respond to objections, basically arguments that no, animal experimentation is permissible, it's not wrong, and here's why it is. And I'm going to use those argument analysis skills to respond. So basically, this structure is a little uh, unique because when the issue is raised, some people respond in kind of defensive way. They kind of immediately respond, no, animal experimentation is okay. And um, they might or might not offer their reasons. But since they respond in a defensive way, they're not really open to thinking about why or considering why somebody would think it's wrong. So I want to present these objections first before returning to a case to think that animal research is wrong. I think if we respond to these objections, people will be more likely to um, consider this case. Whereas if you present the argument first, they'll probably be thinking about all their objections and not really be paying close attention to the argument that you're giving. So that's, uh, that's my overall strategy. <laughs>